Antonio Simmons, Nathaniel Mitchell, and Malek Lassiter were charged in a 38-count second superseding indictment. They were alleged to be members of a Hampton Roads, Virginia line of the Nine Trey Gangsters, Nine Trey, an East Coast set of the United Blood Nation. Defendants, along with Anthony Foya and Alvogn Davis, conspired to violate the RICO, multiple violations of the violent crimes in aid of racketeering statute, and committed multiple violations of, for using, brandishing, and or possessing a firearm during the commission of a crime of violence. After a seven-week jury trial that commenced on February 6, 2018, a jury convicted defendants of 37 counts charged in the superseding indictment. Founded in 1993, Nine Trey was the first of the original East Side sets of the Bloods. Nine Trey required its members to act within their line, or chain of command, establishing a hierarchy akin to the military. A new member could join Nine Trey by either getting beat into the gang, or by putting in work. This could be selling drugs, committing acts of violence, or otherwise earning money for the gang. Members generally moved up in rank based on their reputation for violence, their loyalty to the gang, and their ability to recruit new members and make money. Robberies and drug trafficking were two of the most common sources of funds for Nine Trey. The line's chain of command was very important to Nine Trey, and transgressors could be disciplined for failing to do so. Punishments ranged in severity based on the offense. Certain offenses, like snitching, called for the death penalty. The death penalty for snitching applied even if the transgressor was not a Nine Trey member. Respect was also important to the Nine Trey Bloods. If a Nine Trey member was ever disrespected by another Nine Trey member, a rival gang member, or someone from the general public, he was expected to handle it, as disrespect to one Nine Trey member was viewed as disrespect to the entire gang. Any showing of disrespect could have been a death sentence. If the member could not get to the person that disrespected him, he would go after the closest one to them. Their mother, wife, child, sister, aunt, brother, nobody was off limits. So, Simmons began his life amid troubling circumstances. His parents and stepparents were addicted to drugs and used and sold drugs in front of their child. By age 10, he began drinking alcohol, and he was smoking marijuana daily by age 11. Before we get into it the crimes in this story, we have to note that he had racked up a significant criminal history. His past convictions include obstructing police in 1991, carrying a concealed weapon in 1993 and 2004, fleeing from police, 2002, felon in possession of a weapon in 2004, operating while impaired in 2006, and operating without a license in 2008, there is domestic violence in 2006, and possession of marijuana in 2006 and 2008. Simmons was given probation for most of these convictions, although he spent a year in jail, twice, for felon in possession in 2004, and possession of marijuana in 2008. It is what it is. Let's get into it though. In November and December 2015, Simmons, Mitchell, Foya and Davis were well-established members of a Hampton Roads-based line of Nine Trey. Simmons held the rank of low, an upper-level management position in Nine Trey, managing the daily or monthly activities of his subordinates. In addition to his managerial duties, Simmons engaged in narcotics trafficking. Foya was a three-star general in Simmons' line, who looked up to Simmons as a father figure. Davis was also a three-star general who associated with Simmons' line during those two months, and Mitchell was a one-star general in Simmons' line. By December 2015, based on their propensity for violence, Simmons had designated Foya, Mitchell, and Davis as his cleanup crew, or his chosen squad of shooters. Lassiter, Foya's cousin, had not officially become a Nine Trey member by the beginning of December 2015, but he was looking to join the gang. Between December 10 and December 27, 2015, a little over two weeks, defendants, along with Foya and Davis, committed a spree of robberies, murders, and attempted murders in the Hampton Roads and Virginia Beach area that left six people dead and three more wounded. The government pointed to two catalysts that sparked this crime spree. In the fall of 2015, Simmons received a disciplinary action from his Nine Trey superior, Dido. At that same time, Mitchell was looking to increase his notoriety within the gang, in order to rise in its ranks. Mitchell knew he had to put in work. By December 2015, Foya had a well-known reputation for violence. In fact, Foya was known for going around, shooting people for nothing and killing people. Mitchell wanted to prove that he was just as much of a gangster as Foya. By late November 2015, Foya had growing concerns that one of his childhood friends and fellow Nine Trey members, Al Tarek Tynes, had become a snitch. 
Foya began texting multiple individuals discussing harming and robbing Tynes, both because he was a snitch and because Tynes was rumored to have money. On December 10, 2015, at 7.28 p.m. with Simmons still on freeze, Foya was hanging out alone with Tynes. Foya texted Davis, don't call me, but I need you on deck, bro. Foya then texted Simmons four minutes later, saying, 20 minutes in we'll call you dad. One minute later, at 7.34 p.m., Foya followed up with Simmons, he replied, I'm with a meal so it's guaranteed. In nine trays coded language, food references like the meal or being on the plate signified that someone was a target for violence. Simmons replied, facts, which signaled confirmation. Shortly thereafter, Foya called Davis for help. When Davis arrived, he saw Foya in Tyne's gold Lexus, with Tyne's debt in the passenger seat. Foya told Davis that he shot Tyne's in the head. Just hours later, at 2.56 a.m., Simmons texted Foya, bro I've been up all night. I need the money by 11 this morning or we dead bro. In a subsequent post-arrest interview with law enforcement, Simmons admitted that the money he referenced was to be used to repay Dido and get relief from the freeze. On December 14, 2015, Simmons, who was still in need of money to pay Dido, instructed Davis, Foya, and Mitchell on a plan to rob a gambling spot in Norfolk, Virginia. The four initially planned to go to the gambling house sometime after 7 p.m., but that plan did not materialize. Eventually, at 8.58 p.m., Foya texted Simmons, man we only have two hours. If you don't hurry up I'ma get out and redrum somebody. Redrum, another nine tray code word, is murder spelled backwards. Ultimately, the gambling house robbery never occurred. By 1 a.m., Foya and Mitchell were passengers in Davis's car, and Foya directed Davis to Portsmouth, Virginia. About an hour later, Foya texted Simmons, redrum if you can, pour me a shot of some, but I'll talk to you tomorrow. Simmons replied, handle that before 7-5. 5 is one of the monikers nine tray members called each other. Simmons then immediately followed up, that gambling spot is still a go 5, forget what Dognuts talking about 5. Dognuts was another 9 tray member who told Simmons that that gambling spot was off limits because one of Dognuts uncles ran it. 15 minutes later, Foya confirmed and then told Davis to stop the car. Foya and Mitchell jumped out and began firing at two people walking along the street, RF and Vandal at Mercer. Mercer was shot dead, but RF was only shot in the hand. After the shooting, Foya said to Mitchell, man, bro, you shot that female dog. RF placed a 911 call five minutes after the shooting. At that same time, 2.20 a.m., Foya placed a 47-second phone call to Simmons. Three more murders occurred six days later, starting on December 20 and 21 of 2015. Just after midnight on December 20, Foya and Mitchell shot to death Linda Lassiter, Linda, and Wayne Davis, Wayne, in Portsmouth, because Foya heard that someone related to Linda was telling police that he was involved in shooting up her house on Thanksgiving that year. And on December 21, Mitchell shot and killed Jamesha Roberts in Norfolk, Virginia, simply because she was walking on the same side of the street as him. Mitchell boasted to his fellow nine tray members about the shooting, saying that the chick shouldn't have been walking on my side of the street. In fact, Dog Nuts was present when Mitchell told Foya after he shot RF. F that chick man, but you still one up on me bro, which Dog Nuts took to mean that Mitchell and Foya were competing with each other for the most shootings. Linda Lassiter had no relation to Foya's cousin. By December 27, 2015, two days after Christmas, word of Simmons Freeze had reached a rival Nine Trelo named Skino, who led a Nine Trey line based in Virginia Beach. At that time, Simmons and Skino were in an intra-gang dispute because Simmons allowed one of Skino's men to jump from Skino's line to Simmons' line. Line jumping often caused such rivalries within Nine Trey because it was seen as a sign of disrespect to their former superior. Thus, while Simmons' freeze was supposed to stay secret, Skino decided to make it public knowledge to get back at Simmons. In response, Simmons decided to take over Skino's line by whatever means necessary. On December 27, 2015, Mitchell, Davis, Foya and Foya's cousin, Lassiter, went to a meeting at Simmons' house. Lassiter was wearing a red bandana, which is a common apparel item for nine tray members. Because Lassiter was not yet a nine tray member, Davis questioned Foya about it. Foya then handed Lassiter a 38 caliber handgun and told Davis that Lassiter was about to make his way home. Someone making their way home was gang code for their becoming a member of Nine Trey by putting in work. Simmons also questioned why Lassiter was there and wearing red. 
Foy again said that Lassiter was about to make his way home. During the meeting, the men discussed Simmons' dispute with Skino, and Simmons remarked, Yo, can't none of Skino's scraps bang out here no more. Simmons instructed that Blacko and Lanes, two of Skino's generals, got a vest on, because to his knowledge, they were going to jump lines and fall under Simmons. Simmons then directed anybody else they a green light on them. If they not trying to flip, mash the gas on them. Meaning kill them. The four men left together in one car, first heading to the apartment where Nino, another of Skino's generals lived. Mitchell, Foya, and Lassiter got out of the car with loaded guns and knocked on Nino's door. Davis estimated that the men waited by the door for less than 10 minutes. After getting no answer, they left. Shortly thereafter, Nino called Mitchell and remarked, Bro, I just saw you all leave my house, like what you all got going on. Mitchell responded that they were just coming to check him out. Nino replied that he had heard from Blacko that Simmons be pushing the button for them to fall back from Simmons' crew. Blacko had also told Nino that Skino wanted his men to get their guns up in preparation. Mitchell then tried to soothe Nino, saying, you know, Blacko supposed to be falling up under Simmons, we were trying to see if you all were trying to make the same move. Once Mitchell ended the call, Foya said, man, F that vest, F Blacko and that vest. The men then drove to a Virginia Beach neighborhood where Mitchell believed that Lanes lived. Davis believed that if they found Lanes, they was gonna kill him. More than likely. When they got to Lana's house, it looked like it was empty. Mitchell didn't want to go up and knock on the door, so the men pulled around back, where he then saw people who he recognized as knowing Lanes. He got out of the car and asked them if they had seen Lanes, but they had not. They then drove back to Portsmouth. Proceeding down the list of Skino's generals, Foya next called Blacko on their drive back to Portsmouth. Foya pretended to have an interest in purchasing guns from Blacko in an effort to figure out where he lived. Blacko told Foya that he was living in Norfolk. Nonetheless, Foya directed Davis through Portsmouth to a house that Foya believed to be Blacko's residence. When they arrived at the house, they could see someone was there. Foya said, yo, I knew that Ninja was lying. Davis pulled up past the house and parked further down the street, almost around the curve. Mitchell, Lassiter, and Foya got out of the car and walked towards the house. Mitchell and Foya approached the door while Lassiter stood watch just down the street. That house actually belonged to S, a woman who had dated Blacko in high school and had remained friends with him. At around 8.45 p.m., Mitchell and Foya knocked on her door, and S, who was home alone at the time, could see a third man about 20 to 25 feet down the street, facing away from her house. Just minutes later, Mitchell shot her six times at point-blank range in the doorway. As Mitchell and Foya began to run back to the car, Foya and Lassiter fired four to five shots at neighbors who were gathered outside their homes and had witnessed the shooting. After hearing of the shooting, Simmons called Davis, screaming at the top of his lungs, telling Davis that Blacko and Skino were looking for Davis. Davis testified that, in his view, Simmons was not necessarily upset that S had been shot, but more so at how everything came back on him. As far as these guys, it's not really much else to say. Ultimately, Simmons received three consecutive life sentences, plus a fourth consecutive sentence of 40 years as imprisonment, Mitchell received five consecutive life sentences, plus a sixth consecutive sentence of 50 years as imprisonment, and Lassiter received 35 years as imprisonment. Anthony Foya was sentenced to life in prison, and Alvogn Davis pleaded guilty to his charges, receiving a sentence of 45 years in prison. This about wraps it up. This was a 9 tray blood story. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.